Hello, this is Steven Johnson. Welcome to another edition of Captain's Compass here at Shipyard. Uh, today marks our 10th edition of Captain's Compass. So for this milestone, we thought we might cover the topic that kind of started this whole series. Um, it kind of started the idea for this to come out uh, from us at Shipyard, and that's what is data orchestration? Um, and of course, we're data orchestration vendors, so we have a lot of opinions and thoughts about what data orchestration is. But of course, those can get pretty technical. Those can go pretty long, and no one wants to sit here and watch an hour-long uh, edition of Captain's Compass about what is data orchestration. Uh, I wouldn't want to do that edition either. Uh, so I thought about like how can I compare data orchestration to something in the real world uh, that you can kind of you know draw a parallel between the two and it'll make data orchestration make more sense. Uh, thankfully, I have a friend who can do just that for us. Uh, so this week's Captain's Compass is gonna it's gonna feature uh, Matt Palmer from Mage, uh, and he has a perfect example from the real world of how he compares data orchestration to something in the real world. So let's check it out. So when I think about the modern data stack, I like to think about it like a symphony. Uh, and that makes data orchestration the, the conductor of the symphony. Uh, and so it's the conductor's job to make sure all the musicians are playing, uh, you know, harmonically and in, in concert and uh, they're following their cues and they're on tempo. And so in the same, in same vein, right, it's the orchestrator's job to make sure that each individual component is happening at the right time. Each individual job is uh, interdependent on the requisite other jobs. Um, and so, you know, that's reflected in the nature of tools like Airflow, where you have a DAG and the directed acyclic graph, and the DAG manages the relationships and the dependencies between the other parts of your data stack, right? Airflow is saying, oh, we need to run this Fivetran sync, but then there are all these downstream tasks that depend on that Fivetran sync running, right? And so we need to intelligently manage how we're executing those tasks. Yeah, so it definitely sounds like we'd need to take Matt with us to our next trip to the orchestra, because if you're anything like me, I go to the orchestra and I hear the music and I'm like, that sounds great. But I don't even think about the things that the conductor's doing, like uh, making the, you know, making the, making that sound sound different. You know, for me, you know, I go to orchestra, I'm like, oh, it's going to sound the same no matter who the conductor is. And I think that's a perfect comparison, like Matt was saying, to what we do as in, in like in the orchestrator space of the data of like the data ecosystem. Is yes, you. You can write, you can run your five trend jobs and your DBT jobs, and you know maybe Tableau or you know reverse reverse uh, ETL things like that. You can run all those things separately. Like they will run, and like those tasks will be accomplished. Uh, but just like the orchestra could play their music and the music will get played, the the conductor allows the orchestra to play together uh, and to play with all with a common goal. And I think that's the perfect example of what an orchestrator is doing as well as an orchestrator allows you to run those same tools that you were already running, but allows them to run in their most efficient way possible so that, you know, whenever you're trying to get from A to B, B to C, C to D, like those things are happening as efficiently as possible. Uh, so you're not wasting time. You're not, uh, you know, you know, the dependencies are being managed and things like that as well. Um, and so the next thing, whenever we talk to customers, the, the next big question is, yeah, it's, I need to connect all these tools, but like, can I do these other things with an orchestrator? Like there's an orchestrator, like, specialize in anything else. Um, and I think Matt does a great job of continuing his metaphor to kind of answer that question as well. I think the important piece is that the conductor isn't also playing an instrument in the orchestra, right? The conductor isn't playing the trombone uh, and playing the bongos, right? Like the conductor is managing the people that do those things because they're specialized and they do them very well. I don't know about you, but I'm currently thinking about a conductor in an orchestra, like playing it, playing the xylophone, like maybe having a violin on his other arm, uh, and then trying to conduct all at the same time. And that's a pretty awesome uh, vision for me to think about, and I would definitely sign up to see that show, even though it definitely would not sound very good. Um, and it's kind of the same thing that we have in our orchestration tools, right? If you try to make your orchestration tool do all the transformation, do all the extraction, do like like create visualizations, all that things. Uh, it can sometimes overpower the orchestration tool whenever there's tools that are kind of created specifically for those purposes that are going to do a, probably a much better job uh, and then allow the orchestration tool to do what it does best, which is kind of orchestrating those outside processes. Uh, and then, you know, in all parables in life and all metaphors that we can create as people, I think it's always great to kind of drive home that that comparison between the metaphor that you were making into that into the point that you were trying to go for. Uh, so I'm going to let Matt kind of pop back in here and finish up that connection between a conductor and orchestra to a data orchestration tool. So here you go, Matt. So when I think about data orchestration, I take a step back. I think about a uh, conductor. Um, that's managing the other pieces of your data stack, not necessarily performing intensive data transformation jobs, but kicking off the processes that do perform those jobs, right? And then reporting results back and managing downstream dependencies. 
Yeah, and I think that really drives home that that conductor metaphor there for data orchestration is that you know our job as a data orchestration vendor with us at Shipyard or Matt, Matt and them at Mage is that we're just trying to help data organizations do the things that they're already doing good or well, and we're trying to make them do them even better, make them more efficient, save time, save resources, uh, try to catch errors before they happen, right? And so those are those are all good things that conductors are doing for orchestras, and that we're trying to do in the orchestration space as well. Um, so again, I, I hope I hope this video has kind of helped you kind of understand a little bit more about what data orchestration is and maybe what it isn't. Um, and I know our team at Shipyard would love to discuss if you need data orchestration uh, for your organization, and, I, and Matt would love for you to reach out to him in the same way at Mage. Uh, both tools are great. We both have our pros and cons. Uh, we'd love for you to check out both tools and see how each one of them would work for your organization. Uh, you can check out how to contact Shipyard in the description below and I'll definitely have the contact information for Matt and Mage in the description below as well uh, so that you can check out both products and see how orchestration can help your organization and kind of just take your data team to the next level.